I'm not gonna lie, I'm still in the honeymoon phase with the coilover setup on that car. That thing looks fucking good. Every time I walk up to it, I'm just like... Dude, I'm still in shock that this thing fucking ran so well. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ugh. So, before we got the motor fired up, I emailed ARP and was like, yo, so this is the main stud kit, these are the rod bolts that I used, here's the procedure, here's the torque, all that stuff. Do I really need to go back and retorque all of this stuff? And they were like, no, you don't. They said that if you torqued it properly, there's no reason to go back in and retorque that stuff. Which is freaking sauce, because now I don't have to pull the bottom end back out. But they also told me that the connecting rod cap torque for the bolts I used is 40 foot-pounds, not 28 foot-pounds. So, we do still gotta pull this bitch out. Which I'm honestly not too mad about because I was gonna pull it out anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like... Plus I gotta do some Moby D2 manifold stuff that's over there and... But we're gonna start by taking the intake system off and then we're probably gonna do the cooling system later, probably not today. We got the whole thing up and running. We got it up to temp. We got the whole cooling system bled and it sat at temp at idle for probably like maybe 10 minutes, something like that. So it should should be properly heat cycled. So we should be good to go. I want to get the intake manifold off today and then we can start doing wiring and other cooling system plumbing stuff later. So today's going to be a little bit of a short day. It shouldn't be too bad. Oh my god. These OEM boxes are huge. Give it to me. The air temp sensor. Oh. Ooh. Ow! Fuck, that hurt. Alright, let's take the dipstick off, except I'm gonna leave it in the pan is this thing still full of oil give me uh. see the nice thing about having it like ready to fire up like this and just run it for like two minutes is I don't have to connect like half the shit for the manifold so we don't have anything for the crankcase vent set up and we don't have like a bunch of other stuff hooked up in here which makes it super easy to take apart Manifolds are so much easier with quarter inch tools than with three eighths. It's ridiculous. Oh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. <sighs> yes. So, another cool little tip for you guys doing intake manifolds one, the intake manifold nuts are M7. M7 by 1 or by 1.25, I believe. And you can actually get them at like, like O'Reilly's and shit. <laughs> They're just these little nuts, but if you're unfortunate enough to have one of these stripped, these studs, you can actually buy these studs that go into the cylinder head. They're like a dollar at the BMW dealership. So if you have one that's fucked up and it's all stripped, you can literally just go buy a new freaking stud for it, which is super fucking nice. Especially if you guys have like vacuum leaks from the intake manifold. You can actually just go buy a new stud, which is pretty stout. Is that all of them? Oh, no, there's one more. Which I found out because I had a vacuum leak from my intake manifold once upon a time. And I bought brand new studs. And then I had no problems anymore. Alright, are we loose? We're pretty loose. How far can I get here? Can I pull the whole manifold one-handed? That's going to be the question. Let's see if I can just POV this fucking manifold removal. So we have a vacuum line in here. We have a vacuum line back underneath. Come on. There it is. Let's get a fuel rail and harness over here. The idle air control valve is still plugged in. Thank you, sir. Oh! What do you know, boys? Look at that. Alright, well, fuck. That took a lot less time than I thought it was going to. I guess we can keep moving forward. 
let's start unplugging other shit. I really don't want to crack the cooling system tonight, so I think we're going to leave that for another time. There's that. That. That needs to come off. That is off. What is this for? That is for... I don't think I need to unplug that. I think that is the crank position, and I think that gets unplugged down there. Let's get that off. Oh, there it is. I love how fast cars go from working to not working. Like, it's been like 10 minutes, and this thing is already in fucking pieces. Oh, fuck, I dropped it. It's gone. You know where it went? It went in the fucking hole down here. It always goes in the fucking hole. What did I say? I said that hole is fucking good for finding hardware. I swear to God. Every time. I should start a podcast. I'd be like a fucking grumpy old man now. Where the fuck is my magnet? There it is. That's what I should do. It should be like a podcast of its own. I like put a fucking GoPro on like a first person camera and just talk about shit and work on cars. That'll be my podcast. I guess we could do starter stuff. I do need to disconnect the positive battery though. Uh, 13. Oh, come here. Ugh. Is a 13. I always, uh, I kind of zip tie the wires together. It makes finding them so much easier. So they're all just zip tied together. Alright, so the intake manifold's off. Got a bunch of the sensors and some of the wires unplugged, stars unplugged, all that good stuff. So I know this video was a short one. I wanted to include you guys in just about every aspect of working on this car and building this motor. And this is just like a tiny little step, just something I'm doing after work. So basically next time we're going to drain the coolant, get a lot of the stuff, get some more of the heavy lifting stuff done. Today was just like super easy stuff, super quick. So this is, this is progress. This is what progress looks like. Just bored, lonesome afternoons, wrenching. Next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh, and I'll see you guys later. We are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust. Search, but you stay lost. We are, we are reaching for the stars. But we're